Stennis from DJ's Classic Garage. How you doing today? Today we're going to talk about something that has been plaguing, plaguing our hobby since 2007. And that's right. Ethanol gasoline. Ethanol gasoline was supposedly the end all the be all to make less pollution. It's supposed to help cars run better. Help the farmers make some scratch. And the one bad side effect that no one really thought about or cared about was the effect it had on classic cars. Cars that did not use fuel injection that had nitrile uh, rubber on them you know, and stainless steel all throughout the system. No. The, the danger with ethanol is that it's hydrophilic. What does that mean? That's a big word, Dennis. Holy mackerel. I may have to look that up. I'll actually tell you. That's a big fancy word saying that it sucks water in. And because it sucks water in, well, water then separates out from the gasoline and it has a really weird effect on aluminum when there's alcohol and water and gas, well the gas doesn't really matter, but the alcohol and the water do a weird thing on aluminum especially and it makes something called white rust. And we're going to get to that in a few minutes and I hope you're not squeamish because this is pretty terrifying. So a little information of like what cars you shouldn't have this on and you know project farm did a whole thing on on ethanol and carburetors a few years ago and that guy is the benjamin franklin of our time he his experiments are just absolutely fabulous he even shows you that those additives really well they don't do anything i'll put a link once again that i'll even remind you later Put a link down below to his little series because this is really important stuff if you're a classic car owner or even a car that was built before 2007, 2008. Because you have to really take care of your car to make sure that you minimize the damage that this ethanol will do. Perfect example. It's a BMW underneath this cover. You've seen it in previous videos. It's a fuel injected engine, but it was designed in, I don't know, 1984. So it had just regular rubber. It had regular rubber on the tips of the, uh, the O-rings for, uh, uh, for the fuel injectors and plastic little caps on the fuel injectors. The fuel lines were just regular rubber. Just high pressure rubber, but regular rubber. They're not nitrile. Inside the, ta inside the fuel tank was a lot of aluminum and other types of light metals. These things do not go well with ethanol. I bought this car in 2011 and I was using ethanol gas because I didn't have any other access to other stuff and I was treating it. But I guess I didn't treat it enough or it wasn't working. And I had to clean the entire tank out because it had well, white rust in it. Not a lot. I was lucky because I was driving a car enough that it wouldn't have time to build. But it was there. It was on the pickup. It was on the float. It was a little. It was nasty. So uh, now I've been running non-ethanol in this car, Murphy's. Um, lucky I have that here. They're 93 octane, pretty good gas. Haven't had any issues with filters. So I've been very happy. And the cars were much happier because before I did that, I had to change the plugs down to temperatures because ethanol burns way hotter. And you have to think about that also if you have a car that's not completely computer controlled. If it's a dumb computer like this is, you really need to make sure that you're not getting any pre detonation. This charger, obviously, it's carbureted. It has regular fuel lines. The carburetor has small X-rings in it that are made of just rubber. And the carburetor is made out of aluminum. You know, the, the fuel sending unit is made out of light steel. Things that are just not very ethanol friendly. Um, 
wasn't able to use ethanol the first few years putting it back together. I was treating the heck out of it with uh, stable marine, which may work better. I don't know. It wasn't so bad, but also I'd run, I would run through gas pretty quickly. I would never let the car set. In Florida, we don't have to let our, put our cars away all winter. And uh, that's a good thing. So, you know, this car, I've been very fortunate with that. Now, let's go over to the bench, and we're going to go look at what happens when you put away your car for the winter, and you leave ethanol gas in, in the fuel bowls. This is how bad it can get. So let's take a walk over there and take a look. You know, while I'm taking my walk over to my bench, let me take this opportunity to smash that like button. It's right down there. Smash it, baby, smash it. And if you've been enjoying the content, hey, might as well subscribe. Who knows what I'll do next? I don't know what I'm gonna do next. And it's good to do those things because if you like my content and subscribe to my channel, you get more things similar to what I do. So if you like cars and car hobby and repairing your own car or learning about old cars, this will help you see more of that type of stuff. So please do this to buy, but do it to everybody else's that you enjoy any of their content. It really helps everybody in the long run. All right, let's go to the bench. All right, we're heading over to the bench. Now, if you're squeamish, you know, you may want to look away because this is this is pretty horrific. We're gonna go. Uh, my light turned off. Oh my god, I was in the dark the whole time. Okay, so we're gonna we're going to take a look at this. We're gonna zoom in at the horrors of ethanol. So, like I said, if you're squeamish, this is the Thermoquad. I bought this one used. This is amongst the worst ones I've ever seen. This is what happens when ethanol gets left in a, in a carburetor that's mainly out, made out of aluminum. You get this wonderful white rust that gets into every, well, this is some other gack, that gets into everything, every orifice. Look. The primaries are blocked. That primary is blocked. This one is this full of gack. Um, if you look underneath, you can see where it's seeped through the wells, the wells, the well seals. And that's why at the bottom of the carburetor, it's all inside of there and it started actually rusting that. But this is the true horror right here. Look at that. Look how bad that is. Everything is just coated in this white rust. And it's nasty. Just just terrible. What I mean, it's cleanable. But this is what ethanol will do. And the only way to clean this is to take um, straight gasoline with a brush and dissolve it. Just, I mean, you can see it's just gone and just eaten away. You're going, Dennis! Dennis, I put treatment in my gas. I have no worries while I store my car for the winter and don't drive it. Well, I'm going to show a link down, be down below uh, for Project Farm. He did testing on said additives. And, um, yeah. You'll probably think twice after seeing that. They really don't do much. And, and you'll, you'll have a carburetor and a spring that will look like this, needing a full rebuild. And this is the other beautiful part of, of ethanol. This, this is rubber, allegedly. Just brittle just turns to brittle plastic it even has a sheen of plastic 
but that's this is what ethanol will do to rubber makes it hard like a rock and it just breaks apart so what so Dennis you go what can I do well well imaginary person out there let me tell you all right to answer an imaginary person with rhetorical questions question of what can you do so you don't get that it's like 3d pure horror I should have had this for Halloween. Um, is try to find non-ethanol fuel. You know, Murphy USA has 93 octane non-ethanol. And I can run that in my 10 and a half to 1 compression engine. If if you can't get 90, if you maybe get 91, 90, try uh, different octane boosters. If you have to run ethanol, put only enough in the car that you'll burn in that amount of time. If you're storing the car, drain the carburetor. Take the carburetor off the car and take all the fuel out of it. Siphon out the gas tank. Then fill it with, then fill it with you know, non-ethanol gas just to store in there so it doesn't, it's not empty. There's really not much else you can do because if you have to have ethanol gas where you live and you're storing it for the winter time, you're going to wake up to this in the spring and you're going to have a lot of time invested in rebuilding your carburetor, which would have been perfectly fine had it not had ethanol gas sitting in it and as always remember to take out your classic car because you'll make someone's day it could even be your own catch you down the road